I'll make it so much here, right? I tell you what, we'll, 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 we'll go on with it, with it, with it, with it. Emily's here, just loads of love before she goes. One, two, three, massive cheer round your applause! Yeah. the mixed blessing slash curse of going on first, at least I get to have a pint immediately after I've done my sex. Um, so I'd just like to start by saying, um, quite predictably perhaps, that academia is not inherently funny. It is quite hard to make academia entertaining. Um, but I keep telling myself it's alright and I don't need to shit myself about tonight, because even if I am not funny at any point, my research is naturally quite hilarious. Um, and that is because, you haven't even heard what it is yet, and that is because I research Geordie women going out on the piss in Newcastle. It is brilliant! And I, I'm, woman, I'm not Geordie, but I am a bit of an expert in the subject. Um, but I love nothing more than going to conferences and talking to stuffy and snooty old professors about slut jobs and monkey wanks. Um, and incidentally, while we're on the subject of monkey wanks, the last thing you want in an interview when you talk to a participant and say, so, just tell me, what is a monkey wank? It's for them to go, oh, hold up, I'll show you. <laughs> to be fair, it's not quite as daunting as my uh, master's research, which was about safe sex, um, and involved one young woman talking to me in great detail about what it feels like to be a cock puppet. <laughs> my grandma's just given up now, quite frankly. And then anyone asks her, so what is it that your granddaughter does for her, her PhD again? She just sighs, looks down and goes, women's problems. And quickly changes the subject to her other granddaughter, my sister, who's training to be a lawyer. I think we all know who's going to get left more in the will, don't we? <laughs> but anyway, what I'm going to do with my all too brief, yet at the same time terrifyingly long time on stage tonight, is to talk you through the findings of my research in what I hope is going to be an effortlessly funny and witty way. So I'm researching inappropriate and appropriate feminine behaviour on a night out in Newcastle and I'm interested in sort of the tensions and the contradictions that young women have to manage in order to do femininity on a night out. Um, and just in case you're wondering at this point whether people have to be an expert in their subjects to study them, I can absolutely assure you that is not the case. Um, far from being an expert in appropriate femininity, give me a pint of Fosters and a packet of pork scratchings and I'm happy as a pig in shit. Which is kind of ironic considering Fosters, pork scratchings, pigs and shit. Um, so anyway, I'm going to do a little bit of a social experiment with the audience tonight and talk you through the rights and wrongs of how to be a successful, appropriate and ladylike feminine woman on a night out in Newcastle, which of course, if you've ever been out in the big market, you will know it's not half as easy as it sounds. <laughs> so step one ladies, gents, you can take part two, have a look at the drink in front of you. Have you got a beer? That's minus five points in the femininity scale. Uh, a pint of beer is minus ten points. Seriously, I was surprised by how many of the young women I interviewed said to me that beer, pints of beer were kind of manly, masculine and unfeminine. Uh, one of my participants, in fact, told me a great story about her ex. Um, they used to go out for a drink, she'd ask for a pint of beer, he'd bring back a half. She'd ask for a pint of beer, he'd bring back a half. She'd ask for a pint of beer, he'd bring back a half. And this went on and on until eventually she just said, look mate, why do you keep bringing me a pint of half when I ask for a pint? And he said, oh babe, you just don't look good with a pint in your hands. To which she replied, well, you know what? You just don't look good with half a pint thrown all over your face. And I've seen him chuck it all over him. And you wonder why he's her ex. <laughs> but anyway, back to the feminine drinking scale then. So if you've got some kind of fruity addition in your beer, blackcurrant cordial or lime cordial, that's kind of a neutral drink choice, I'll put you on zero. If you're drinking wine or some sort of spirit, uh, vodka good, whiskey bad, that's plus 10 points. Cocktails, spot on, plus 15 points, with bonus points for a little umbrella, a flamingo shaped drink stirrer, or a little, some sort of berry garnish. Now, please note ladies, if there's anyone here at a hen party this evening with a penis shaped drink stirrer, that doesn't count. Um, and you should probably just go home now. <laughs> So we've talked about drink choice. Step two on this, this feminine night out then is your outfit choice. So if you're wearing baggy clothes, jeans, trainers, manly clothes, haven't had a wash, that's a failure of femininity. Um, a nice dress, done your hair, done your makeup, that's successful femininity. And your dress should be short, but, but not too short. Um, a little bit of cleavage, but not too much cleavage. And um, seriously, for my participants, the rule seems to still apply that it's not appropriate to have both your legs and your boobs out on a night out. Um, and to be fair, I think someone should probably print that off, laminate it and stick it up in the gate on a Saturday night. <laughs> 
Um, but so thinking a bit more about outfit choice then. So fake tan, a little bit is kind of okay, um, but not too much. Eyelashes, one, two, and I assure you, even three pairs of fake eyelashes is seen as okay, but not 17. Heels, if you're gonna wear heels, don't wear these little short, tiny, like pathetic kitten heels. If you can't do it properly, don't bother doing it at all. Um, but at the same time, don't wear heels that are too high, because of course, that just makes you a slut. Um, standing out is important. Obviously, ladies, you don't want to look like everyone else in a bodycon dress and a pair of stilettos on a night out. But at the same time, fitting into the venue is really important as well. So tonight, ladies and gentlemen, if your outfit reflects stale laughter and the sweat of terrified academics trying to do comedy, then you're probably doing something right. <laughs> so we've covered drink choice, um, we've covered outfit, um, you're either sat there with your Topshop dress and your Sauvignon Blanc, well done, um, or your baggy t-shirt, your pint of Fosters and your eternity of being undateable. But how are we going to be feminine on this night out that we're on? And of course you'll have to bear with me because obviously we're not actually on a night out right now. Um, there's no one being sick in the corner, no one gyrating awkwardly to R&B, or at least I don't think so, I can't quite see what's going on in the back, so you might prove me wrong up there. But let's just imagine for the purposes of my social experiment um, that we are on a night out so we can carry on with the, with the hilarious game. So if you're not drinking and you haven't got a drink in front of you, minus five points, that's a failure of femininity. The young woman that I talked to, femininity was very much tied in with drinking uh, and not drinking was seen as kind of boring and sensible. Um, so if you've had a couple of drinks and you're slightly tipsy and you're feeling sort of sociable, relaxed and confident, that is the that's plus 10 points, that is exactly where you want to be on the femininity scale. Um, now I should say at this point, I understand that some of us will never feel relaxed, sociable and confident when we've had two rum and cokes or a 24-7 intravenous drip feed of meat vodka. But you guys probably have other redeeming features. Maybe. <laughs> Some of yours. <laughs> but anyway, um, at the same time, obviously, we don't want to be drinking too much on this appropriately feminine night out. So my participants talked about a kind of fine line or a tightrope between drinking too little and drinking too much. So if you're dry heaving into a bin, um, exposing your lady garden, or you've forgotten your own name, then that's minus 10 points. That is a failure of femininity, and also a possible existential crisis. <laughs> and I'd just like to leave you with one of my favourite stories from my endlessly fascinating and brilliant research. Um, when I asked one of the young women that I interviewed um, if she could give me an example of inappropriate feminine behaviour that she'd seen on a night out, um, and this story is about the street pastors. Does everyone know who the street pastors are? Yeah. Yeah. Just in case anyone doesn't, I'll just give you a brief overview of what they do. So they go around scooping up drunk people, giving them water on a night out, and sort of climbing up little step ladders and getting the women out their high heels and putting them into flip flops. Um, and as they're doing this, they're kind of spreading a message about Christianity. So they hand the flip-flops to these young women, um, they kiss their feet and say, Jesus has clothed you. And I just want to make it clear, that's not funny. At this point, I want to make it clear, I am not slating the street pastors. I think what they do is very noble. Um, I also think it's bloody brave. I mean, I wouldn't go out in the gate in anything less than full riot gear. Um, so to go out armed with nothing but a pair of flip-flops and the Lord's blessing is bloody courageous in my opinion. But anyway, back to this tale that my participant was telling me. She told me about one young woman who was so, so drunk. She was really, really wrecked. Um, so the street pastors kind of helped her into a pair of flip-flops um, and, you know, said, Jesus has clothed you. But they didn't kiss her feet. And I thought, why on earth not? What, what, does Jesus not love this one? Does he not want to clothe her? I mean, what has she done wrong? Had she been drinking a pint? Was she wearing jeans and manly clothing? Was she a slut dropper or a cop puppet or a monkey wanker? But no, no, the truth was, was a little bit less pleasant. Um, apparently this young woman was so drunk that she'd actually squatted down in front of the street pastors and weed all over her own feet. And to be fair, you may laugh, ladies and gentlemen, but I thought, you know what? If someone apart from Ryan Gosling wanted to kiss my feet on a night out, I'd probably have to piss all over myself as a fence mechanism too, so good on her. Thank you.